good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is, wherever you are. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 14. I'm going to go ahead and open up a prayer. Father God, thank you for another beautiful day in your creation. Thank you for blessing me with all that I need. I ask that you continue to help me grow through reading your word, through meditating on you. I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me as I continue to share your work. I ask that you bless me so that I can bless others. Help me to remain righteous in all that I do. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Romans chapter 14. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. If somebody's weak in the faith, we're still supposed to accept them, listen to them, comfort them, help them to grow stronger in their faith in God. Jesus told his disciples they're supposed to minister unto the lost sheep to bring them home for God. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Some people believe they can eat anything. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Remember, we're body of Christ. We're all a part of the army of the Lord. As our body has many members, so the body of Christ has many members. We're not to judge lest we be judged. We're supposed to judge them by their spirits. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, long-suffering. The word of God is good to have within you to know if they know the word of God. We should study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of God and know what we're speaking of in the word of God and see how the spirits within those around us react to the word and how they know the word. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. If you're a man of God, if you're doing the work of the Lord, God's going to be with you. And he's going to see that you're able to further the gospel and do his work. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded of his own mind. You know, it's not something that we need to disagree on. If you think it's a particular way, that's okay. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Do all things with a joyful heart. We should do all things unto God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you can't give thanks for the day, for the simple things to God, God's not going to bless you with abundance and the big things. Verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. We're all here by grace. It's only because of God and his spirit that he gave us that any of us are here and able to experience in this sometimes confusing but wonderful and temporary experience of living and being free to be a child of God, to experience in his abundance, to experience in his joy, to be able to touch, feel, see, and move freely about. Verse 9, For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught for thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess 
to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Jesus tells us in the word of God multiple times, rather a millstone be tied around your neck and cast into the sea than be a stumbling block for a child of God. Verse 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. We are not the judge. God is the judge. We are supposed to be brothers in Christ, helping to keep each other held up. The word tells us, don't let the alms of the left hand be known by the alms of the right hand. God works in mysterious ways. Lean not unto your own understanding. It takes everybody and everything to make the body of Christ and this word work. Nothing is unclean of itself. If a man think it to be unclean, then it's unclean. If I don't think it's unclean, let me be free and let me do that which I choose. God will provide lessons and consequences to the things I do for me to understand what it is I should be doing and what it is I shouldn't be doing. But nothing is unclean of itself unless we think it to be unclean. And if I think it to be unclean, then for me it is unclean. But if you don't think it's unclean, well, it's not my job to judge you. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Christ died so we could be free. If your brother thinks meat is unclean and he doesn't eat meat and he doesn't want meat, don't go slip some bologna on a sandwich and give it to him. Why would you do that? If it was hard for him, maybe he really liked meat and he enjoyed eating meat, but then he decided not to because he decided it was unclean for himself. So he got rid of meat. He cleaned his house of it, didn't have it anywhere around. And then you show up with meat, knowing that he used to desire that meat, but now he thinks it to be unclean and he doesn't want it anymore. But you throw it in his face. Why would you do that? You're being a stumbling block for your brother. It's not our job to judge why he thinks it to be unclean. And it's not your job to try to judge me that I think it is clean. Christ died so we could all be free. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. Verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. You shall know them by their fruits the fruits of the Spirit. Let us therefore follow after the thing which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Remember faith, hope, and above all, charity. Everything we have, the blessings God gives us, the abundance we share in is only to help others out. Verse 20, for me destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Back up to verse 15, it tells us, but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. You got a hot dog stand and you decide to get free hot dogs out. Remember what I was saying about the bologna sandwich? And you're given, it's free hot dog day, national hot dog day. You're just giving them out. If your brother doesn't want those hot dogs, now don't be charitable. Now's your time to not give it out. Be considerate of your brothers and whatever needs they have within themselves for where they're at in their walk with God. All things indeed are pure. We're gonna flip over to Acts chapter 10, verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. What God has for us is above what any man can offer. The things of God 
no man can compete with. The things of God should be the most righteous, should be the most pure, should be the most holy. If you wonder, if you have to question whether it's of God or not, it's not because God will always make a path clear. God will always make known his work. Back to Romans 14, verse 20. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 9 through 12. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours, freedom, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Remember, we're supposed to be looking out for our brothers and sisters, lifting them up. We're to respect where they are with their walk with God. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. If you're a leader, if you're at the right hand of God, or I'll say the left hand because only Jesus is at the right hand of God, but if you're at the left hand of God, you're right there with him. Your faith is strong. You're reading, you're praying. Your faith is bold like that of a lion. But your brother is weak. Don't even allow yourself to be a bad example for those who might not have the same strength in God. Verse 21. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. We have to be examples of the work that God can do in people's lives if we keep the faith and walk righteously with Jesus. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't beat yourself up wherever you're at. The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. The journey is the destination. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. We're going to go over to Titus 1.15 real quick. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. We're to feed the spirit and deny the flesh. It's the sinful nature that's the problem. All things should be done for God. God's word tells us it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, it's what comes out of his mouth. God's word tells us all things are lawful unto us, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful unto us, but we will not be brought under the power of any. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon.